Okay, so I'm joined today by Dr. Nitish Pariani, a third generation radiation oncologist based in Florida. He is the founder and medical director at Tampa Oncology and Proton, a premier cancer treatment group. Uh, Dr. Pariani is a highly accomplished expert in the field of radiation oncology, and I'm absolutely thrilled to welcome him here today to get us insights on the topics of radiosurgery, radiotherapy, and cancer in general. Dr. Pariani, thank you so much for being here, and um, I know your time is limited, so I'm going to go ahead and get started with the first question. So when you're working with a patient, how do you determine if they need radiosurgery, radiotherapy, or surgery? Well, Joanne, first of all, thank you for having me here today. I really appreciate the opportunity. Um, when we have our radio surgery program here, we're lucky in that it's a very multidisciplinary approach. So uh, I work very closely with our neurosurgeons and our medical oncologists to really come up with a, a team plan of care for a patient before we implement any sort of intervention. And our, our neurosurgeons are very involved in our radio surgery program. They come down to the radiation department and participate in the treatment planning. So we're really able to take each patient um, and on a case-by-case -case basis, try to determine what the best course of therapy for them is. For some folks, that means a surgery up front followed by radio surgery. For other folks, it's radio surgery in lieu of, of surgery. And again, I think the benefit of this multidisciplinary approach is um, there's not a cookie cutter way to approach um, uh, patients, but we really try to identify the individual and unique circumstances for that patient. Okay, well, that actually leads perfectly into my next question, which is a little bit more patient focused. So how can oncology patients inform themselves about their radiation therapy options? Um, for example, if a patient is interested in radio surgery, uh, what types of questions should they be asking to see if that might be an option for them? So I think it's tough. You know, I, I always uh, tell folks that it's kind of easier to research your flat screen television than it is your own your own healthcare. You know, we we know to go to CNET and other other resources for stuff like that. Whereas with healthcare, it's a lot more challenging. Um, I think what patients can do to empower themselves, and I'm I'm a big advocate of patients empowering themselves and really kind of trying to take as much of their own care into their into their hands as possible. But they really need to be asking questions about the technology that that's being used to treat them. Um, when was the system put in? What you know, how, how many procedures has that doctor or that group of doctors performed? Um, you know, what what is their closest competitor? And I always encourage patients to get additional opinions. Um, you know, for some cases, obviously, are more urgent than others, but usually in a, in a radio surgery world, patients have time to really explore their options and figure out truly what is the best approach for them. And I think that's, that's a, a big part of empowering the patient to make the decision that is really going to be, again, uniquely suited for their case. Yeah, it sounds like it It becomes more and more precise per patient, and that's really, really important, I think, in any kind of treatment. Um, so kind of shifting away from the, the patient focus and moving more towards a general look at this field, um, can you speak to the standardization of care for radiotherapy and radiosurgery? Um, are there best practices in place? I, I think there are, and I think it's it's tough to say that there's standardization because there's so many different platforms, mm -hmm. so many different approaches, so many different types of tumors that we treat. But I think there are certain best practices that really should be uh, followed when we're talking about radio surgery, especially intracranial radio surgery. Um, you know, I think it's important that um, precision uh, and accuracy are at the forefront of the treatment. Uh, imaging, the frequency of imaging, the accuracy of the imaging. All of these things ensure that we are having an, a reproducible setup for the patient and ensuring that we're truly targeting where we intend to target, um, mm -hmm. meaning the tumor, and of course, avoiding those critical areas of the brain where radiation can be detrimental and could cause uh, long-term uh, and, and short-term uh, negative effects. And so I think those are sort of the factors that I, I push for um, with patients to say, listen, radio surgery is not typical radiation therapy. You know, the the margin of error in standard radiation therapy is very high, whereas in radio surgery, it's very narrow. And I think having the, the proper technology and, and doing the appropriate imaging helps ensure that. Okay. Well, I mean, that actually fits perfectly with what I wanted to ask next. And you mentioned it, of course, when you think about radio surgery, you have to think about precision. So my question is, how important is technology then in treatment delivery? And how can technology support in improving patient outcomes? I think it's critical. And, and what I tell patients is, you know, we, we have a very robust radio surgery program here, and we treat folks from as far as, you know, several hours away. Um, and I don't like to have patients travel long distance for, for treatment that's not 
necessary. But what I tell patients about radio surgery is, listen, this is not, again, your typical radiation where we have 20 to 30 treatments. And if one treatment's slightly off, it's likely not to impact your long-term outcome. Oftentimes, these are single shot, high dose procedures where accuracy is of the utmost importance because we don't get another chance. Um, and so I think having that that precision is key. Having a team that's comfortable and that does a lot of these is very important. Um, and again, the technology that you're using behind that, um, you know, we use the Brain Lab system, which I think is extremely um, useful in that we can image at every angle of treatment. Most radio surgery programs can't do that. So we are certain that patients are accurate within millimeters um, every time we turn that beam on. Okay, well, actually, um, that brings me to my last question, uh, which is actually about brain cancer. Can you talk about some of the challenges associated with treating cancers of the brain and how do you overcome those challenges? Well, I think probably one of the biggest challenges we face is patients can be in a wide variety of, of clinical presentation when they have cancer in the brain. You know, some patients come walking into our clinic, uh, whereas others are in the hospital and often innovated. Um, you know, and, and everything in between. And I think so one of the biggest challenges really is really customizing an approach for that patient that they're going to tolerate, that's going to provide them the benefit that they need. And again, that's where that multidisciplinary care comes in. You know, oftentimes some of those patients require a surgical intervention before they can be a good candidate for a radiosurgical procedure, whereas others, radiosurgery is the, the right answer um, straight out the bat. Um, so it really kind of is, uh, you know, a, an important thing to look at. And, and the challenges we face is, Again, every patient's unique. No, no two procedures are the same. Um, but I think having the the right tools in your toolkit and having the right team on board uh, makes it a lot easier to overcome those challenges. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's absolutely perfect. Then those were actually all of my questions for today. So um, I'm going to thank you so much for your time and for sharing your insights with us. They're extremely valuable and, of course, beneficial uh, for patients that are battling a cancer diagnosis. So I, pre I appreciate your time as well. Thank you for having me.